All right, so what we have here is a CPU, plain old CPU. This is just one of my ones that I like to play with, I experiment with. First thing we're going to do is take the lid off. We need to remove the parts here so we can strip it down. You need a Phillips screwdriver. And what I use is I got this little box here. It lets me separate them out based on where the pieces are coming from. You don't need that, but it's good to remember where parts are, where the screws are coming from. So for instance, these are the screws that hold the data drives in and the false door if you don't have a second data drive. And just, I remove that and just pulls that right out. These, just wiggle them up gently. Take them out. Don't bank them. Now, I'm going to remove this one, which is hard to get to. Got to go at an angle. Get that one loose. And this. And this. So those six screws would remove the two data drives, or a data drive and a cover, or two covers, whatever way you have it set up. Data drive. Now, we're going to flip it over, and we're going to remove these four screws. Ignore this hole over here. This is from an experiment a while back where I had to run cables in. That's there. Don't wonder why doesn't mine have that hole. So I'm going to remove these four screws, and I want to show you, and here's where we're going to start seeing the difference in the screws. So let me get these four out, and then I want to show you the differences. All right, I'm going to put these in their own little slot over here. The ColecoVision has multiple screws in it, but the vast majority of them are small like that or long like that. Small and long. Just keep that in mind. This used four small ones. Once you take that, you just roll that over and it unhooks on the top. Set that to the side. Now there are seven screws holding the base down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So just reach in here until you get your Phillips screwdriver seated on the screw. You can try looking down in there, but it's in there. You just reach down in there until you find it and spin it. Keep going until it moves. If you have a magnetic screwdriver, it's a little easier. The screws come right out. If not a magnetic screwdriver, you can just flip them over and fall out. This one at one time was magnetic, but it seems they've lost its magnetism. I kind of think that the screwdriver itself was never magnetic. I think that this paint that they put on it was magnetic paint. Because it's a set of five screwdrivers you get from a dollar store for a dollar. So it's not like they're super expensive screwdrivers. So what I do is I wiggle around in there and try to feel the screwdriver catch the screw. And one more right here. It's in there somewhere. There it is. So that's seven screws. Eh? That one came out. Now if you notice, these seven screws are long ones. They're not short like the ones from the front up here. They're long. So you want to remember those are keep them separate. I keep them separate. Now we turn this over gently because I don't want the screws to go flying on me. Turn it over upside down and wiggle the top until it comes loose. If it don't come loose, flip it over. Check the screws, make sure they're loose. So I wiggle the top until it comes off. As such, set this to the side and just move this out of the way. Let's get these screws. One, two, three, four, five. There's one more right here. Six. The seven. The other one came out with a screwdriver. So all seven screws up. Now, when you open up yours, yours will look a little different. It won't have these black mm, insulation, I guess, on your power connector. Again, as I said, this one was a modified. At one time, I modified things. So I cut this at one point, and I resoldered them back and put covers on them. They won't matter. I just wanted to point that out so you don't wonder why. Now the next thing you do is pull these two reset covers off 
set them to the side. Now we are going to remove the four screws that hold the video out. One here, now they may come out, they may stay stuck in the braided wire. You may not have braided wire. There are some versions that don't have a braided wire. Instead, they have a piece of metal. But they all have the same thing. They have a connection that goes down from the top to the bottom. Four screws. Now on yours, odds are the screws that hold the metal tabs right here are going to be long screws, like that. You'll notice when I'm taking this apart that all the screws are short screws. I changed them out a while ago just so that they would all be consistent. Just keep an eye on what you, well actually I'll show you where the short screws go so you know which ones get short screws, which ones don't. So keep removing screws. There's those four right there, then there's one, two, three here. We're going to take this top RF shield off. This shield, all it does is stop your computer from interfering with basically with AM radio and since I don't like AM radio and talk radio and then I also well my atoms will live for a long time I take the shields off and toss them away set them to the side you don't need these to run the atoms so if if this atom is going to be your daily driver if you're going to if you use this a lot I suggest taking these off if you're taking this atom and setting it on a shelf to look pretty leave them in but I take them off so set these to the side Now, once you get in here, there are two screws holding. This is the game board or the ColecoVision board. This is basically a ColecoVision with a few extra chips right here. These four buffer chips have been added and a slight change in how it's arranged. They're held down by two screws. This is where short screws are go. The other difference between a short screw and a long screw, besides the fact that the length is the size of the heads. See, the short screw has a big head. Long screw has a short head, a small head. So. Short screws with big heads go in the middle to hold things together. Get these out. So there's two screws right here. Now again, yours may have different screws in different places. So if you would take a look at them, keep track of what you're doing, and do this. If you have a, if you have a phone, which basically everybody does, take a picture. As you're going along, just turn it on, take a picture. That way you can track where everything goes. And you can keep track of it. Just keep taking pictures. It won't hurt. Once those screws are out, you can lift this up. This little plastic cover here is designed to stop your connector from grounding out on that RF shield. Take that out of the way. Take your connector. Wiggle it backwards. Until it's out. And the game board comes out. Just like that. Set that to the side. Now we have this bottom RF shield. Again, extra metal we don't need. Not only, again, holds the heat in, makes it heavier, these also rust. And if they start rusting on these tabs, they're rusting on the circuit boards. The next thing you know, your computer is covered in rust and it's ruined. Or it's a mess, one of the two. Take them out. You don't need them. Nobody listens to AM radio no more. Now, this is the atom board. The other one was the game board or the CV board, the ColecoVision board. This is the atom board or the delta board. It's also called a delta board. The other one's also called a gamma board or something like that. I don't know why. I call it the atom board, ColecoVision board. Works great for me that way. What we're doing now is I'm going to remove the screws around the outside. And again, I'm going to set them off to the side. Sometimes it's easier to leave them in there and just wait till you take the RF shield out to get it out. So there were one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five screws holding the, this RF shield down. And then take your RF shield, lift it up, get your screws if they're loose, guide that out the hole. And the other fun part about taking your atom apart is you get to see all the little stickers that they put in here saying, yeah, we checked it, that works, that was fixed. All the wires they patched in. It's a cute little piece of, now I see why the computers had issues. 
So we're there, and I have a screw back here. I don't want to forget there it is. Send me a screw. So that one, set it to the side. Again, I'll keep stressing this. You don't need the RF shields on this at all. It doesn't affect the operation of the app. It will affect the operation of AM radio around you, and maybe even somebody who's trying to pick up TV on an antenna. But yeah, you know what? Welcome to the digital age. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove these two screws here. These screws are different. This one has a washer on it, if it's correct, if it's the right piece. And this one is just a short screw. This is the reset button that resets it into Atom. So we're going to take that get that out of the way. Over here we have two screws holding the power supply in place. These we're not going to be using again, or that power supply, the power supply connector. These we're not going to be using again. One of them, obviously, you can see is different from my modifications. But I want you to see the difference here. That's a shorter screw, even shorter than the short screw. If you're going to, you want to save these shorter screws, but if you ever go back to putting it back together, make sure you use the right ones here. Otherwise, you end up getting, and I think this one already had that issue. Otherwise, you end up getting, nope, this one hasn't. Let me see if I got one. Hold on a second. I want to show you something. This atom right here, see it's got the shorter screws here, but sometime in its past life, somebody put longer screws in and see how it made it bump out. So, make sure it's got shorter screws. That atom, by the way, is got something dead on it. I believe it's um, capacitors. We're gonna, I'm going to chase it down. So, remove those two screws, lift it out. That's free. These right here, they will either be loose like this, and you can just pull the... Let me take a screwdriver so I can point at it. Take and just pull the little tabs off to the side, like so. Yeah, I'm trying to do it without blocking, but I don't think I'm going to. You, you got to move these tabs back and forth a little bit to get it to let go. Either they're going to be loose, so you can do this. Come on. There. So you can pop it out. Or it's going to be have, it's going to have hot glue on it. Hold it in place. As you can see, Coleco loved the hot glue. And they use hot glue to hold these in place too. If you have a glue gun, get it ready because you probably want to use it. If these are loose, if they come out hard, then they'll go back in easy, hard. But if they're broken and hot glued in place, you're going to need a hot glue to put them back in again. Again, this one the same way. Just pull one tab to the side and you can wiggle it. This one's a little easier than that one because there's nothing stopping it. But you can see this, see, this one had hot glue in the past too. So we got them out of the way. Now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to lift this up. Sometimes getting these out is hard because... Somebody's bared down on these with the screws too tight when they're locking in their data drives and it flattens out and deforms the plastic. And to get them out is hard, but you got to just keep fighting to get them out of the hole. Sometimes you need to actually even take like a pair of pliers and just spin it around the top a little just to round it off some more. So lift this up, get it out of there. And this is the last RF shield. We're going to put that aside too. So now we've completely pulled the ColecoVision, or the Coleco atom down, and that's our original base. We're going to set that aside. You're going to save this because you want it later, because you want to make your atom original again. This right here is one of the external power supplies that I have built and sold. I have sold about 70 or so over the past couple years. They're very reliable. They You unplug the printer and you just plug this in where the printer goes. Plug up cable in over here. It's got an on and off switch. Inside it's... Let me just make sure that the screws are catching here. Alright. I had them unscrewed to make it easy. Inside, it has a Meanwell RT58 power supply. It's a brand new power supply. 
supplies all the power for the Atom. No big bulky printer. Works really well, but it still has the same disadvantage of the printer in that you still have an external power supply. Which is not bad, but it's not the best in the world too, especially if you don't have a lot of desktop space. In the past, I and a few others have taken that power supply and we've stuck it inside the Atom. If I can come up with a picture, I'll post it in here so you can see it. But we stuck it inside the Atom, cut some cables, mounted it inside the Atom. It worked, but it wasn't pretty. I want to show you the Power Base Model 1. The power base is an atom base. I painted it flat black so that it would differentiate it from a regular atom base. Has a label on the bottom that says atom base. Power cord coming out the side. On and off switch over here where the printer goes. You disassemble your atom, you put your atom back in here. I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, now that we've disassembled the atom, we've got the power base sitting here. We're now going to reassemble the atom. And again, you can put the RF shielding back in if you want. I personally don't use it because, as I said many times before, the RF shielding is not necessary any longer. That was just to get past the FCC regulations of putting out too much noise that interfered with AM radio. And as I've told you many times before, I don't like talk radio. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start assembling. To assemble this, we take, this is our atom net cable for the front, put it underneath the board, set the board back in here on its little pegs, like so. Sometimes I gotta wiggle things around, make sure things get right. But once you get the cables in the right spot, there, that one right there, and we set it on the pegs, set it on the peg, set it on this peg, this right here is a little tight. You may have to go in like this at an angle. If yours is tight, if it's tight to put it in. Let's go at an angle to get it in there. And then line this peg up here. Come on, peg. There. Now, I can get it in there. See, it can go underneath there. There's nothing that's going to hurt there if it's touching it. Next thing we do is we take and we just make sure our board is setting in here properly, like so. Take our screws, and I have me a fruit fly who is going to die. I'll pull a Judge Judy on you. I'm going to take and I'm going to screw down this board now, the atom board. This one, don't screw down because that one hooks up to the R, or to the cable. So I'm going to do this one, this one. Let's do the one in the middle first just so that's out of the way. Middle cable. Then this one. This one. You'll notice if you put when you're putting this back together, there are holes in this system for things that don't exist. It's like they change their mind halfway through the build. Or maybe you won't notice. I notice things like that. Now, let's get back in the hole. <laughs> Two more. You. I gotta keep an eye on my camera up here so that I don't run out of battery power and have it shut off in the middle of filming and then try to figure out what happened. Alright, so the bottom board is in. This right here comes over here. The atom reset cable. I'm gonna put it right here. And remember, 
from when I took it apart. This one has a washer on it on the open end here. I guess they had this so that they could have this screw pre inserted so they could slide it in and then rip, rip, done. So that goes there and then this one comes here. Then we're going to take our Atom Net connector, guide it around everything, and you'll be able to see when I get done. These can only go on one way, so just take some time to figure out how they go in exactly and just push them in. Mm -hmm. Eventually, get that one in. And as I said, if they wiggle around because these are cracked or whatever, you can take hot glue and you can just hot glue them in place. Put a little bead of hot glue across the top to stop them from wiggling around. Because you don't want them to push in when you're plugging stuff in. Now, the, bottom, the base is in. We have our power supply here. Now your power supply probably has one of these attached to it. Cut it loose. Again, this is an RF modulator, or not RF modulator, an RF thing to cut down a radio frequency. Cut it loose. Save it. Don't throw things away. Save it. This one too, if it's in your way, you can get rid of it too. But I'm going to leave that one there because it's not my way. I don't think. It might be. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my cable that's coming off the power supply and plug it in here. Like so. I'm going to take two zip ties that comes with the power base. Run these through the holes here and lock them into place. So if you see so far, we haven't done anything to damage or modify the original atom at all, other than removing the little RF or the little yeah RF shield that was on the wires there, and the RF shields inside. All of them can be set to the side and be put back in the system if you decide that you want to retro grade or retro or whatever, put it back to where it was. So there we go, we got that going. These are hooked up. Now what I want to do is I'm going to guide wires around so that this is down as flat as possible. See, I'm, see how I'm guiding this under here? You know what, I'm going to remove this. Yeah, just cut the little wire. Some of them don't even have this on them, some of them have it. I think they were like, Clico was like halfway through building and they decided everybody had to have those things on there. I have removed them, and over the past six years, I have never had a single issue with anything because these weren't on them. So now, I'm going to take this one and guide this wire down under everything. Just play with the wires, get them going you know, down there. We're just trying to do cable management here. Get things down there without forcing an issue. See, just like that. Everything's down here. It doesn't matter that they're just sitting in here loose because in a moment, they're going to be nicely held in place. If you happen to bend these, just make sure that they're not sticking out of the way. You want them over here along the side. You don't want them way out. So there we go. Now we got that. The next thing is the ColecoVision board, the game board. And that fly is back and he's going to die. You must die flat. I had, you know how hard it was to fly in fly swatter on November 1st? No stores want to fly swatters. It's like it got cold and all of a sudden fruit flies and stuff said, hey, we're going to go inside for the winter. And inside meant come in my office. All right, now I am going to put this one on here. Again, it's got a screw here. And a screw over here. Those are the center screws. Then you have one, two, three screws on, or four screws on the outside. These two up in the front are important in that they hold the cartridge connector stable so that it doesn't flop around when you're in and out of the cartridge. So make sure you get those in at least. The other screws are maybe this one over here for the joystick. 
plugs, but the rest of them are like, they're hit and misses to whether they Are they desperately needed? No. Should you put them in? Yeah. So again, I'll continue on, put all the screws in. This is plugged in here. I'm not putting a plastic back on here because I don't have the RF shield. If I had the RF shield there, I'd put that plastic back in there. Now we have this over here. This I am putting on here because this is a ground strap that connects the two grounds together. So I'm going to hook that ground strap up. This one to this one. And again, your model may have an actual metal strap or metal, metal bracket, not this braided ground strap. But they all work the same way. So I'm working my way up here. Oop, get up there. One more screw here. Okay, now all of them have been put in there. Now, just, just as a little FYI, especially if you don't take these things apart that often, this capacitor right here has to be, go bent like that. It has to be bent. If you stand that thing straight up because you're like, oh, I want them all to look good, so I'm going to stand them up. You stand that one up, you can't close it up. The case won't close. This has to be bent. Just one of those. Hey, now that you know. So let's get up here and do the other pieces. We don't need, this is going to set to the side. That's going to go in our bucket of things we're going to save if we ever want to retroactively put this back the way it was. Our two reset buttons. On there. Then our top. Now, if you notice, just, just to give you an idea. See this big space into this bed gap in here? That's what we're taking advantage of with the power supply. We rotate, roll that in there nicely. Play with it a little bit to make sure they go in the hole. Get all these little holes lined up. These right here, make sure that you wiggle them, make sure they get in the hole. You don't want to tighten them down to find that this thing is pushed down because then you're just taking it back apart to fix it. Now, almost dropped all the screws. That would have been fun. I'm going to flip her over. And I'm going to put in the bottom screws. There's seven screws. One, two, three. You know, I count them up seven. One, two. Mm -hmm. That one went in upside down. Three. Yeah. Ah, two went in upside down. I'm, I'm doing good here. Five. Or seven. Yeah. Seven. Take my word for it. There's seven now. Now I'm just going to screw these in. And again, you got to feel around until you get the screw and then start putting it in. Just tighten it down until it's snug. You don't have to torque these things in. This one right here, the screw's upside down, so i got to flip it over to get that one out when the time comes. Or if you have a magnetic screwdriver, you can just get it out that way. This one went in upside down, too. There have been many times in the past where I didn't realize it went in upside down. I'm sitting there spinning the screwdriver for like five minutes. Like, why is this thing not going in? Probably like I'm doing right there. And I realize screws are in upside down. I could try with a magnet. Hey, that worked. You don't even see it. I'm sorry. Let me move this over here so you can see it. Is this one upside down? Oh, that one's right side up. I can tell, I put that one. That was the upside down one. All right. Okay, let's turn you this way. So I can see. You're upside. Uh, you're right side up. And where's the upside down one up front here? I thought I had one up front upside down, but I guess not. I think that's the only one left I got to do over there. Come on. Snug them up. Here we go. That's the one that was upside down. Leave that gets them all, and I'm going to just wipe this off real quickly. 
get the dust off. Oh, in a moment. This right here, you take the front, put it on the top piece first, like so, and then slide it in, like that. And this takes the four short screws. over here so you can see better sometimes as I said sometimes I don't realize my camera is not in the right angle I'm getting low on battery juice I may get this thing assembled before I had to swap batteries that would be awesome take a rag and just wipe the dust off these things like to put out little pieces of rubber when I'm using them the rubberized stuff doesn't work too well flip it over Now, we're going to put it in the data drive and the faceplate. Do the data drive first. Now, again, we have no RF shield in here anymore, so I don't need to hook up that RF shield screw if I don't want to. And I don't want to. If you really want to save your computer, your systems, you can pull the data drives apart too and take the RF shields out of them. Out of most of them. There are some that the RF shield is integral to the design. So it's a matter of if you open it up and there are no screws holding. Alright, so the battery did die. It's just as soon as I start tightening this in. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the two screws in that hold the data drive in place up here. Now when you assemble these back here, there are two sizes. If you look at them, there's two different sizes. A big and a small. The big one goes in the back to 1A. It goes so that these little clips face the back and the little metal tabs face the front. So this one goes into 1A in the back. It's very hard to see, but it goes in there. This one, this one goes into 1B, which is second from the front. Confusing, it should have been all the ones together, all the twos together, but not. 1B. Now this one you can put in and miss a pin, so make sure when you're looking at it that it's centered, there's a gap on both sides, and that you're not up against one side or the other. Now we're going to put it in the little faceplate right here. Again, this goes in the same way as the data pack, data, yeah, the data pack, the data drive goes in. And then I'm going to have to do my little part that irritates the heck out of me in a moment. But I think I've done it in a couple of other videos before. Is I have to line things up. See, these go in and they don't move around, but these have little slots, and those little slots let you to move them around. And I don't like it. This has to line up. I am very, very particular on the fact that this has to line up on both sides. So I unscrew the screw long enough or enough to move it, push it in, and then tighten it back up so that these line up better. Again, the little rubber dust coming out everywhere is irritating me. Now, just so you can see, here's the power supply right below these vents. All the heat can escape out of there. There's vents below it, so the airflow goes up nicely. Here's the wires we just did right here. Oh, uh, yeah, you did see it. I'm sorry. Here's the wires we just did. Those are all nicely in there. They're not going to go anywhere. They're not sticking out. Let's put the little cover back on. I'm going to turn it sideways here. Power switch. Everything's all done, all self-contained. Now I'm going to set it up so you can see it work. So now I'm over here. I'm at my desk. I've replaced my main system with the one I just installed the power base on. You can see. Back here, it's video cable. Nothing else hooked up. TV's on. Flip the switch. Works good. I'm getting a hum. I gotta go back behind here. My wiring is a little messy back there. That's not the system. That's my wires are messy. Because I keep switching things out. But yeah. She works good. I should have got me a data pack. Let's see if I can reach one over here. 
All right, so I went and got a data pack real quick. I just want to boot a data pack, show you the data drives working. It's going to load Crazy Climber. Let me give it a moment to do this. Speaking of which, there's Crazy Climber right there. I don't know if you got a peek, but ignore the mess over there. That's my, my 128K system. I gotta put back together. And that one's a friend's atom that I had to replace capacitors in. Just about done loading. I just wanted to show that data drive's working. There we go, data drive works. And now I'm gonna pause this and I'm going to do something else. All right, what I just did is I just plugged my ADE in. That's this box right here. And I'm just gonna boot up the ADE. Reset that. I just wanna show you, it works totally fine. No issues. Let's load Turmoil. Again, another one of my games. Show that it's loading off of the ADE. You can see little blinking lights in there. And game runs just fine. Very quiet. No external or anything. Looks really nice. There you go. That's a Powerbase Model 1. Why Model 1? Because I may be adding more to it in the future. I can build five right now. Just contact me directly at info at 8bitmillygames.com. That's info at the number 8, B-I-T, M-I-L-L-I-G-A-M-E-S dot com. M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E. Mickey Mouse. Yeah, brings back memories. If you're interested, I can also do an upgrade to your system if you would like that. Just contact me also. That would require you sending me the base and I would upgrade and send it back. I wouldn't paint it black. The reason I'm painting, I'm painting mine black, or at least the reason I painted that one black, was to make it stand out, and also because, as we all know, the Atom likes to change color over time, and I got tired of retro brighting stuff. So, anywho, power base is available. Contact me if you're interested. If you want to try building it yourself, you could do that. Have a great day.